top five for psoriasis. Indeed. So yeah, for me, mm. the first protocol is clean up your cosmetics. Mm. It would always be about looking at what you're putting on your skin because psoriasis is such a condition of inflammation. You really, really want to be clear that the things that you're putting on your skin aren't adding to that and aren't inflaming it further, right? Yeah, I think you have, um, with psoriasis, obviously it's an immune system condition um, where you've got a, 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 a pattern of, like you say, inflammation. And anytime you aggravate the immune system with other chemicals, you just layer it on. So stripping back all of those things. Routines tend to be overcomplicated from what I see from most cosmetic companies. Like, put this one on, this da 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 da, and this serum, this is like, no, like put it all back to basics. Like, allow the skin to heal. Most times you over intervene, you're not really letting the body find its own homeostatic, you know, routine, isn't it? Is yeah, so you don't want anything that's stripping <clears throat> the barrier, <clears throat> the microbiome of the skin. That's really important. So, nothing that's kind of harsh and stripping. Yeah. Um, I always use an oil cleanser. That's mm. just what I find is best for sensitive skin. And I think for me, the Dr. Maha's products have been just so life changing for my skin, but also for so many of my clients' skin and people, especially with psoriasis. And I mean, it was ultimately designed to help people with those kind of extreme skin conditions. Yep, Dr. Neil Marr, a fourth generation seaweed harvester, I think, and a biochemist, like a mad scientist in his own laboratory, you know, bubbling away with seaweeds in the background that he's harvested himself and putting together products that have no purpose in terms of scent. He's not aiming for scent at all. And you know it when you open it up, it's like, hmm, this doesn't, this isn't familiarly, fam it isn't familiar as a cosmetic because it doesn't have like a botanical scent. It has this earthy, raw, fatty, oily scent. And that's really what it is. It's a combination of emollient properties from the fatty extract from the seaweed with lots of other fat soluble antioxidant rich and antioxidant rich plant extracts just designed to heal the skin no bs like what's mm -hmm. like it couldn't be any more any less bs in a cosmetic that still belonged in a bottle yeah it's so clean it's mm. got no rubbish in it. it's got no alcohols no nothing <clears throat> and yeah. and for me at a time when my skin is really inflamed it's the only thing that i can put on my skin that not only doesn't inflame it but soothes it and also what i think is really important to note is i think in lots of cases marketing companies market things for specific skin conditions and then it the price point reflects that Whereas with Dr. Mahez, it's really, really affordable, which is so nice because when you have a condition like this, you're going to be pouring your money into other things like cleaning up the gut and the immune system mm. that we're going to be talking about. So it's nice to be able to get the cosmetics that really work and also they're not costing an arm and a leg. Exactly. And just quickly on the point you make about alcohol, really important because most companies put in alcohol to preserve the shelf life <clears throat> and also to drive to deliver botanicals deeper into the skin and to provide this emollient effect that makes your skin feel baby soft. So like petroleum-based jellies or alcohols, these sorts of things, that will allow you to feel, ooh, that's like amazing. It feels so soft. But what it's done is it's robbed moisture from subdermal layers, which unfortunately, again, is just disrupting the skin's own natural cycle. The skin is trying to maintain a pH, maintain a microbiome, which we'll be talking about later on your, in your gut, but also those bugs belong on your skin. And they are the things that maintain this delicate equilibrium of the immune system in the skin, which is what psoriasis is all about. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. So, Next thing, the biggest thing for all of us these days, I think, and particularly coming out of the pandemic, it's become like a catchphrase, but the catchphrase hasn't really gone more than skin deep. See what I did there? But basically self-care and, and like when we give too much of ourselves or take too much on, anywhere we don't set up like, like significant boundaries so that we know that our nervous system is not taking more than it can offer uh, or taking more than it can take, whatever taking on more than it can take, but also it's allowing itself time to just like detoxify from the world for a significant periods of time. And it has to be every day. That's the problem with self-care. It, it can't be a routine where you're, oh, I go to yoga once a week. No. That's not the thing, right? Yeah, and, it, and and more than every day, it has to be often in the day, mm -hmm. little and often during the day. So it's what we always talk about with our nervous system is it's really, really important that it's not uh, wait till the end of the day when you're already in crisis and then mm -hmm. try and fix that. It's like get out in front of it and anticipate it. So never let yourself get to that kind of nettly, like angry, frustrated, because the inflammation that we're seeing in our emotions is also reflected internal body and then also of course on the skin as well so we're really looking at just trying to lower our response to things like mm. our reactivity i guess yeah that's it and the self-care mm. thing is you know it's about like putting some time into loving on yourself 
into gratitude, into mindfulness, into breath practices, into doing some movement, into getting into nature. But it, like, it doesn't have to be, I think the thing that we mistake it for is we all often kind of take self-care on as another chore. It's gotta be things that you love. It's mm. got to be, it only works if it's things that you actually love, that you're not like, oh, now I'm doing my journaling. No, it has mm. to be like, I just love the feeling of scalp massage. So, yeah. you know, once every three hours, I'm going to do a bit of scalp massage or I'm going to slow down my breathing or something just to de-escalate any of that kind of mm -hmm. amped up feeling. And the thing is with self-care, like you say, when people do it, it's like something they have to like, it's loving on yourself. When people take on self-care routines, often they take it on so that they are better in the world, so that they don't mm -hmm. scream at their kids, etc., etc. But it really, at that level, it needs to be more selfish than that. It really does. It needs to be more about actually for me, like not so I can show up in the world better, like none of that catchphrase crap. It's like about how you feel, like like and, and making sure you can know how you feel. And that that's the first step, isn't it? Like actually, how do I feel? And that's a question that most of us don't ask ourselves, certainly not once a day but you know more than once a year we only ask ourselves when we're like we've just gone through a massive you know roller coaster emotions a big fight a big whatever it is or like when people you know they shock themselves by having road rage and like oh god i didn't even know that was in me you're like well it was and why is it there and like that like to start to once explore that and untangle it you need to quieten down the stimulus from outside and allow yourself, allow you to go kind of within and start to listen to what's happening inside your heart, right? Yeah, and I think just to bring that back to the why of it, just to be clear in this one, because mm. we've talked about it so many mm. times before, but why is it so important that the nervous system needs to be regulated? Ultimately, because when we get into the parasympathetic nervous system, that's where repair happens. Yeah. And when we're looking at a skin condition that's inflammatory and that's causing oftentimes big open sores that are, that's so painful, you want repair to happen. And if we're constantly in that low level fight or flight state, we never get to the part of our nervous system that allows for that repair. Exactly, yeah, it is exactly that. And our, and our nervous system and our immune system all track each other. So if there's a reactive nervous system, like you were talking about, there'll be a reactive immune system as well. And we just need to calm and regulate the whole thing. Yeah. So, stop the stimulants. Yeah, stop the stimulants. Mm. And so, in exactly the same way that we were talking about, it's the same principle that runs as a thread through all of these things. Mm. We want to stop reactivity in all ways. Mm. And so adding stimulants into a nervous system that's already overreactive, an immune system that's already overreactive, and a skin that's already overreactive, we're just going to get more reaction. And that's the opposite of what we want. So we need to take out those things that bring up that amped up Exactly. Effect. So we're thinking about caffeine and alcohol and cigarettes and, and also like, you know, stuff where we like phone stimulation from our phones if we're on like gaming if we're like watching tv late at night if we're like anything essentially that's a stimulus that's we and we know which ones the negative ones are you know and it could be sugar i haven't even mentioned sugar sugar is probably the most common of them and sugar really for psoriasis is such poison uh, unfortunately mo most people who that I've come across who I've dealt with with psoriasis, the, the biggest, biggest weakness is sugar consumption, sugar addiction. And that's maybe it's also because it's that emotional eating thing. So it's feeding that part of your body that's like, I'm not getting this sense of satisfaction from my life and I'm going to reach for a biscuit and I get that satisfaction, but for a second and I'm going to reach again. And it's that overconsumption that's, again, it's reflective of the nervous system that's out of whack and it's also feeding the body with things that disrupt the microbiome, which kind of comes up next, right? Yeah. So your microbiome, master it. Master your microbiome. <laughs> yeah, and my, so my friend Kevin Callan, who works with the gut a lot, he always talks about like, if you're being a nettle on the outside, if you're ex exploring that kind of nettly quality of yourself, which might be like shouting at people really quickly or road rage, like you said, or just showing inflammation on your skin, it's because you're inflamed on the inside of the gut. And the root cause of so much of that inflammation comes from in here. If your gut's really angry and red and sore and you know everything's like, oh, it's going to show up in your skin because your skin is like the biggest organ on your body. It's mm. that first line of defense. So you need to soothe everything and calm everything. And those are the key words really when you're looking mm -hmm. at the microbiome yep. stuff, isn't it? Things that are calming and soothing and cooling. Yeah, definitely not stimulating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we think about um, herbs, like the demulsant category of herbs, uh, herbs that help to nourish this mucosal barrier, the lining of your gut wall. So your gut wall is the actual, like your own human cell, cell lining is like one cell thick. It's really hard to take that in on board like beyond that you have this buffer this mucosal barrier essentially that prevents the damage or inflammation from kicking in or pathogenic bacteria from adhering to that lining or whatever it is 
and, and, and those demulcent herbs, really calming, quiet, soft herbs like marshmallow, like uh, meadow sweet, like slippery elm, like licorice, those are the sorts of herbs that are really, really useful for psoriasis sufferers. And, and also, I think, um, useful to, to, to talk about probiotics in this situation because probiotics have such a regulatory effect on the pH in the, in the gut. Um, we often don't recommend them as a first port of call where somebody's suffering from like bloating, distension, but often the situations where we recommend probiotics are where you're seeing symptoms outside of the gut, specifically because they have such a job to play, a uh, role to play in terms of regulating the immune system function. And that's where psoriasis obviously is kind of uh, the root cause of it. And what about things like aloe vera? Is that useful? Yeah, aloe vera because it's a contact anti-inflammatory and because it cools down the liver, it's definitely, I mean, it's hard not to recommend if you have a good quality aloe vera, there's very few people who won't benefit from that at some level. It's a great regulation it's a prebiotic fiber it improves the absorption uptake of nutrients like vitamin c from your diet so yeah definitely and one plans. thing that we haven't mentioned which i'm sure that you would love to talk about yeah. is the idea of fasting for a period of time mm. for the autophagy yeah it's thing. tough not to talk about fasting um so i'm not like a giddy fan of fasting for every body or every condition but there are most, if you go to most kind of traditional cultures, they'll have some sort of fasting window within their year, even where they'll do like significant fasting for, say, in the, for the instance, like in Ramadan, like daytime fasting, nighttime eating. Now, it's not necessarily what we would say is like the best health approach, but it's interesting to see how these things are like, uh, there's like mimetic versions of these things throughout history, throughout human culture. And I think definitely this idea, like once we stopped eating for about 12 hours, our body goes into these lovely kind of housekeeping procedures whereby immune system cells start this process of autophagy where they take dead, dying, broken cells, cells with damaged DNA, other bits and bobs of waste products out of, uh, out of um, uh, tissues and into bloodstream and into the gut, liver, etc., and and remove them from the body. And that is all a process that takes the pressure off our immune system. And generally, that what we were talking about chemicals in your cosmetics, it's that chemical load that you're trying to like reduce. And that's like all versions of chemical load. That's like, you know, the, and when we talk about that, it, it doesn't mean to be, it can be endogenous chemicals, not just exogenous chemicals from outside us as well. Things your body creates uh, in order to process other things. We want to reduce and remove those things um, in order to help to like stabilize and quiet down the immune system. Really. So yeah, and then it doesn't have to be like, and suddenly you go and do this massive intermittent fasting. Mm. It can just be like a 12 hour window. So you yeah. could eat your dinner at six and then eat your breakfast at seven the yeah. next morning and just not snack in between, right? And yeah, I think that, but I also think for a lot of people, what could be more helpful um, is to go through periods or cycles of fasting. So they're not just like increasing their fasting window every day, but to look at maybe like 10 days every three months where they, you know, extend their fasting out to maybe 18 or maybe even 24 hours, but they make sure they're not doing it when they're under severe stress or when they're, you know, they have their period or when they have a load of uh, stuff going on in their life uh, where they have to be at A1 sort of performance. And you need to make sure when you're doing those things, the world is not at you and that you've got lots of hydration and that you're making sure you're actually allowing the body to do its process. Because if you stay in your sympathetic nervous system activity and you're trying to do all this fasting, that's just a recipe for disaster in the long term. Short term, you could feel great. And a lot of people do feel great in these things in the short term. But I think that's the problem. That's where people get really like edictish and really like, uh, they start to like promote this. Ah, this is what everybody needs. You're like, no, listen, it worked for you for three weeks. Shut up. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's not the whole world that needs this. We need to think about, okay, what's sensible for my body in this time? And I guess it's the same as what we were talking about with the nervous system. It's it's kind of when you're doing those fasting and this is what you'd see traditionally, it would be a period of intro introspection. Yeah. It would be like a rest, like a exactly. retreat thing. So exactly. if you're going to do it, it's, it's essentially giving your body that rest that we're saying mm. you should input into every single day in little drips, input into the year in little drips, like take a time maybe to fast, to stay at home, to calm, to do some self care and, and allow for that, like oh, quiet and all the noise that's going on around you. Yeah. Bang on. And so, the final point, I suppose, for us is to say like that all of this stuff, like basically the world is inflammatory. Your life is inflammatory. Breathing is inflammatory. Eating is inflammatory. All these all these processes, your body uses inflammation as part of its uh, necessary response to, you know, living, essentially. Um, Anti-inflammatory herbs and substances, uh, nutrients as well, are, are uh, hence the, like, the, the main tool, the main weapon in our arsenal when we want to calm down something like psoriasis, where it's a sign that, the, that the, in, these inflammatory cascades are happening in a way that are out of control. So turmeric is one of my favorite ones. I know you use turmeric a lot as well. Like, okay, you're not going to give me a recipe. So, 
<laughs> I was like, like. I thought you were still talking. That was, <laughs> no, was like... a bad segue, sorry. So, yeah, so turmeric essentially uh, is like the, the, the best known of all the anti inflammatory herbs, fights all, like all 27 different known inflammatory pathways, all the interleukins and all these sorts of different things. And, and if we can, you know, integrate that into our diet in simple little ways, like golden milk. Oh! <laughs> so, so golden milk's a lovely one as well because I think uh, it's really calming. It's a part of your self-care practice as well. And it can be a little, little ritual that you do at night time, which helps you with sleep as well. Um, so you just heat up some kind of a milk, maybe a non-dairy milk, and you add in some turmeric, maybe fresh turmeric, but you mm -hmm. can also use the dried one as well. And then some really good quality honey, which will be really nice for your gut healing as well. So mm. like a raw local honey, and you can add cinnamon and cardamom in there, black pepper maybe. And it's just a really delicious, nourishing, tonicky drink, but it's also gonna help with the inflammation and just calm everything down. It's again, that moment of pause, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. And interestingly, well, like we're talking about spices. Spices, we always think of like giving heat, but actually spices help to purge heat from the body. They're what's called diaphoretic. So they open up our pores and allow our detox a lot of detoxification processes that would otherwise be given by like like say sauna therapy um so like yeah so so uh, the spices like cayenne like turmeric like ginger these are all spices that really help to like reduce inflammation in the body reduce excess heat in the body uh and, and clear a lot of the like toxic load that builds up in our cells yeah and i have a ps go on ps um i know we don't have five points, but ps is gua sha because mm. obviously gua sha is something i teach and i think what i'm hearing a lot from people online saying is like i'd love to do gua sha but i have psoriasis and it's something that i've been told i shouldn't gua sha over my psoriasis and that is absolutely true you're never going to gua sha over an active area of inflammation because gua sha is about releasing heat from the body the sha means the heat so you're mm. obviously not going to go over an area that is already inflamed and allow heat even though long term that's going to be good because mm. the heat is escaping you don't want to inflame it even more when it's sore but a lot of the time psoriasis sufferers have psoriasis of the scalp. Mm -hmm. It can be really sore. It's so itchy. I've had it myself. It's horrendous. But what you can do to really relieve that is to go wash up the areas around it because a lot of it is around stagnation. Mm -hmm. We talk about this a lot. So you want to get everything moving, especially the lymphatics, mm -hmm. and that's also going to support your immune system and the circulation so that you can slough off those dead skin cells and keep everything just kind of moving and hydrated in the mm -hmm. area. So you can get gua sha and gua sha all around the neck and the shoulders and the chest area. And that has been shown to really improve psoriasis mm. of the scalp. What I would say is you really need to get the right gua sha stone. So you don't want to be using a jade stone. A rose quartz is really good, but even more for psoriasis specifically, or if you're an eczema sufferer, the purple amethyst is the one that you want to go for. And it just so happens that you sell it in your shop now. Well, who would know? So, so yeah, exciting. Magic. So yeah, purple amethyst gua sha stone is the one that you want to be looking for. Mm -hmm. And you can always come to me and find out how to do those psoriasis moves. Nice. She's got lots of tips and tricks and free tutorials online on her own Thanks Instagram page. Hey. Okay. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope that was useful. Shoot us your comments and questions and please like and subscribe. and Tell touch. us what topic that you want us to do next. Well. Indeed that. Yeah, that's where this one came from. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.